Welcome to Concord Baptist Church. Good to have you tonight. Good to people out on Facebook, too. Amen. Brother Dave, if you'd be so kind. Amen. Well, Lord, God, we say the Lord with you again. Thank you for this day, Lord God. It's a nice day. A little bit windy, but Lord God, it's a good day all day, Lord. And Father, we do love. Thank you for, Lord, allowing us here to gather together here on this Wednesday, Lord. And, and praise, worship, glorify you, Lord. Listen to the scripture reading, Lord, and hear the preaching of thy word, Lord. And Father, uh, I do pray for the ones that are still coming. I think we got some that are running a little late. And Lord, just give them travel and mercies, Lord, give them your sake and home. Lord, we're, uh, we want to uh, lift up uh, some prayer requests, Lord. And, um, I don't know all of them, Lord, but uh, you know them. And Father, to pray for the ones that are have illnesses and afflictions. We say that every week, but I pray every day for each and every one here that, that has them and the uh, ones on the outside. Lord, that uh, Father, you put your healing hand on them and, and uh, heal them up and Lord, uh, get them back in church or wherever they need to be, Lord. And, but Father, uh, we do pray also, Lord, that uh, you keep your edge of protection about us with this Corona thing, Lord. And, let nobody in our congregation or on Facebook get it. Lord, we're looking to hear from you tonight, Lord. That's what we're here for, Lord. I, I pray that uh, got the pastor uh, anointed, Lord, that he's prayed up, read up, studied up, ready to give us the message you'd have us to have. We want to thank you and praise you, Lord Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, if you're a handicap and you're a male, please come visit us. Uh, Captain Carpenter has got the bathroom set up with the rails and everything. If you've eaten hot peppers and habaneros and everything, that'll be there to help you. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. And in an emergency, the women can use that one if they need it. Praise the Lord. <laughs> okay. Number 17. Oh, yeah. Come thou fount. One of our blessed church members here has got their knees and everything replaced, and now they're mocking the pastor. Amen. Just because he's a bionic man now. <laughs> I'm glad he's feeling better. Amen. Amen. Here's Richard and them coming in, so we'll just wait a moment. Good evening, Dow family. Amen. So good to see you. We're going to sing page number 17, Come Thou Fount. All right. You'll have to excuse me for just a moment. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, Amen. All right, we ready? Intro. Interposed his precious blood. 
grace, thou great of death, daily I'm constrained to be. Let thy goodness, like a better, find my wandering heart to thee. Prone to wonder, for I feel it, prone to me, the God. Here's my heart, take and seal it, seal it for thy courts above. Hey, buddy, you may be seated. All right, y'all got something to sing, right? Yeah, you do. I know you do. I do. Psalm 25 or 19, one of them. Uh, or that, I don't care. Just. She's glad it's that way. She's glad it's that way. I'm glad it's that. Oh, I'm glad it's that way. She might not be. <laughs> we have to sing. I don't know how to start. Oh. Hmm. Oh, I know how to start. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. You can put everything that I own in the trunk of my car. Yeah. You can take every dime that I have, but you won't go too far. For I found a secret when I knelt to pray. Then God did not ask me, how much can you pay? Salvation is free. Yeah, yeah. And I'm glad it's that way. On the hill far away, on the old rocky cross, my sin that was great, but he paid the cost. By stripes we are healed, and his blood washed the sins all the way. And I'm glad it's that way. You can live in a fine house, or live in a shack by the road. You can breathe through this life by His grace, I'll carry my load. You can ride your new car right up to your grave, but somebody else, friend, will drive it away. Salvation is free, and I'm glad it's that way. On a hill far away, on an old rocky cross, I said that was great, but He paid. By stripes we are healed, and His blood washed for sins all the way. And I'm glad, glad it's that way. way. Amen. Amen. Woohoo! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Brother Dave said we'd be able to. Got it set up where we'll be able to bring Brother Rods next Sunday, Lord willing. Hey, Ben. So uh, that'd be a blessing. And uh, looking forward to that. All right. Well, let's see here. All right, Second Samuel chapter You know, going over the last night, the 10 planks of communism on Facebook and uh, looking at it, it's exactly what's going on today. And people just too dumb, stupid and blind to see it. Amen. I asked the question. 
with all this free stuff they're going to give everybody. And that's how they sucker people in. You know, you're going to get free this and free that. I think there was something on Facebook where Bernie Sanders said it. People will not have to suffer or something that work 40 hours a week and blow it. Somebody said we wouldn't if you didn't give it to those that work zero hours a week. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and uh, but people, you know, I, I remember Tommy Claiborne. I, he used to tell me there ain't nothing free. I said, that's not true. I said, salvation's free. He said, no, it isn't. It costs God his best. It cost him everything. It cost the Lord Jesus Christ everything. So nothing's free. So if you're getting something free, somebody else is paying for it. Amen. So if the government's going to give you something free, somebody else is paying for it. Amen. And that's how they get these liberals and Democrats sucked into this stuff, is they're promising all this free stuff. So what if we all just stop and decide to get free stuff? How's it going to get paid for? Huh? Yeah, print more money. And then what do you do when that runs out? Inflation sky high. Hey, man. But that the, the uh, people can't see that because one of the ten planks of communism was they dumbed down, starting over thirty years ago. Actually, before that, but thirty years ago, last thirty years, they dumbed down the kids in school. People that. When I was growing up, if you had a sixth grade education, you really were smarter than a college graduate with common sense. Amen. I mean, I said Sunday, people can't even make change at the cash register. If the cash register don't tell them what to give. And if you throw another coin in there to make it even, it just spins them for a loop. So... Biden and his cronies sucked all these people in free stuff. Another thing they don't realize is Black Lives Matter. When uh, I forget who it was shot the other day, it was a white person. They were heading down there till they found out it was a white person did a U-turn. And they don't realize, you realize the person that started that thing that's running it just bought, they said, a $1.4 million home. In so, huh? In Whiteyville. In Whiteyville, yeah. <laughs> so guess what? The people down here in the BLM movement, amen, bowels let loose <laughs> mightily, uh, those people are shoving their money in it, doing all the legwork, doing all the rioting, and the people on the top are the ones that are profiting off of them Amen. and sucking in all the money. Well, don't you realize that's the same thing that happens in socialism? They're going to use these people the problem today is people don't read any classics. They don't read any history. I read a book called The Rise and Fall of the Third Reich. It was Hitler's rise to power. And he used the sodomites and everybody else to cause riots, to get all this stuff started. And when he got up there, he started executing them. Amen. But you know what we learned from history? that we have not learned from history. We're headed down that road if these people stay in power. Hey, I was thankful for the stimulus check, but I'd have rather not got it. I'd have rather that we didn't get it because we're going to pay for it down the road. Another part of the Communist Manifesto is taking inheritance, wealth. You work all your life. You save money. You pay the taxes on that money. You die and leave it to your son or daughter. The government comes in and wants to take over half of it. You've already paid the taxes on it and stuff. 
But you know, again, we're in that shape because the lack of faithful people in the house of God. Amen. Not guarding it. I got mine. That's all I'm worried about. And we sit and do nothing. In 2 Samuel 23, these are David's last words in a catalog of David's mighty men. There's a one man in particular here that I really want to share with you. He says in verse 1, Now these be the last words of David. David, the son of Jesse, said, And the man who was raised up on high, the anointed of the God of Jacob, and the sweet psalmist of Israel, said. Now David was a herdsman. He had a few sheep on the backside of the wilderness that he took care of, but he was faithful in the little things. He took out a bear and a lion when they tried to take the sheep. He was faithful and God recognized that and God set him up on high. The spirit of the Lord spake by me and his word was in my tongue. The God of Israel said, the rock of Israel spake to me. He that ruleth over men must be just, ruling in the fear of God. Does that sound like anybody you know in the White House today? Yeah, <laughs> you're nuts. And uh, <laughs> did you see that picture on Facebook of AOC smiling? And they said, it reminds you that the Kentucky Derby's on the way. <laughs> you have to see it. It's funny. And he shall be as the light of the morning when the sun rises, even a morning without clouds, as the tender grass springing out of the earth, by clear shining after rain. And look what David says. Although my house be not so with God. Yet he hath made with me an everlasting covenant. Ordered in all things and sure. For this is all my salvation. And all my desire. Although he make it not to grow. Hold your place there for a moment. And turn to Psalm 89. In verse 34. Well, I'll begin in verse 33 and 34. Nevertheless, my loving kindness will I not utterly take from him, nor suffer my faithfulness to fail. My covenant will I not break, nor alter the thing that has gone out of my lips. Once I have sworn by my holiness that I will not lie unto David. His seed shall endure forever and his throne as the sun before me. Amen. So he says, my covenant will I not break nor alter the thing that has gone out of my lips. And David says back here, he said, although my house in verse 5 of 2 Samuel 23 also, also my house, although my house be not so with God Yet he had made with me an everlasting covenant, ordered in all things and sure. For this is all my salvation and all my desire, although I, he, although he make it not to grow. The Lord said he was going to alter that thing. He kept that covenant with David, the sweet psalmist, even though David messed up. Amen. He was faithful. But you know, when you find faithful men that are trying to serve God, the devil's going to attack them. I mean, if you're just out there doing your thing and you're not interested in anything else of God or doing anything in the house of God, he ain't going to bother you. Amen. But yet you see people that are trying to do something and the devil's going to be all over them. Verse 6. But the sons of Belial shall be all of them as thorns thrust away because they cannot be taken with hands. But the man that shall touch them must be fenced with iron and the staff of a spear. Is that Aaron? Whew. 
and they shall be utterly burned with fire in the same place. These be the names of the mighty men whom David had. The Tachmanite that sat in the seat, chief among the captains. The same was Adino, the Esnite. He lift up his spear against 800 whom he slew at one time. Amen. 800 that he slew at one time. Good evening. Come on in. Verse 9, we're in 2 Samuel 23, verse 9. And after him was Eleazar, the son of Dodo, the Hohite. One of the three mighty men with David when they defiled the Philistines that were there gathered together to battle. And the men of Israel were gone away. He arose and smote the Philistines until his hand was weary and his hand clave unto the sword. And the Lord wrought a great victory that day and the people returned after him only to spoil. And after him was Shammah, the son of Agi, a Herorite. And the Philistines were gathered together into a troop where was a piece of ground full of lentils and the people fled from the Philistines. Everybody's running out. It says, but he stood in the midst of the ground and defended it and slew the Philistines and the Lord wrought a great victory. He said, hey, this might only be a little patch of peas, but they're mine. And I'm not giving them up. And he stood in the, in the middle of it and whipped them all. God says, there's a man that's faithful, that's going to stick with it. And the Lord wrought a great victory that day. You see, we don't have too many people that are faithful today. It's required in stewards that a man be found faithful. But if you're a faithful person to God, even though you're just doing small things. Zechariah, I think it's chapter 4. Let me look. Zechariah. Let me see here. Let me look here. Zechariah chapter 4. Oh, if I can find the verse. He says in verse 10, for who hath despised the day of small things? You know, in today's society, everybody wants to make the big splash. They want to be noticed. Amen. I mean, they do all kind of weird things to themselves. They want to be noticed. They want people to pay attention to them. They want to do the big things. They might be in the church. They don't want to clean the toilets. They want to run the show. <laughs> they despise the small things. But you look at David. He was a shepherd. Taking care of a few sheep. God raised him up to be king over Israel. And put Christ in his lineage. Why? Because he was faithful to what he was called to do. God can't use unfaithful people. But you know, if you'll stay faithful to what God's called you to do, whether it's sweeping a floor, mopping, or leading music, or whatever it is, he might lift you up one day. 
But see, people are quitters today. They get they try something new for a while. They're all excited about it, and then it wears off. You know why? Wrong motive. Wrong motive. If you're really doing it as unto the Lord, you're going to keep on doing it. Amen. Now you look at old, old uh, Shammai here. And it says in verse 11 again, And after him was Shammai, the son of Agi the Harite, and the Philistines were gathered together into a troop where was a piece of ground full of lentils, and the people fled from the Philistines. But he stood in the midst of the ground and defended it and slew the Philistines, and the Lord wrought a great victory. You know, if you're just willing to sit back in the shadows and just do what God calls you, whether it's cutting the grass or or cleaning the church or whatever it is. And he notices your faithfulness and you're doing it out of a pure heart because of your love for him. He'll lift you up. Now, think about this. Here's all these mighty men with the great feats that they did. And here's a man with a patch of peas. Amen. You ain't getting my peas. <laughs> Everybody else ran. You know what most people do today? Well, I ain't, I ain't giving my life for that little patch. No, the people of Israel were probably hungry, going to need the food, and probably got sick and tired of the Philistines about the time the crop was ready uh, to come in and steal it, destroy what's left. They bet. And he said, I've had enough. Sometimes you just got to get to the point where you had enough. You just say, I'm going to serve God, and I don't care. Glory to God. <laughs> and three of the thirty chief went down and came to David in harvest time unto a cave of Adullam. And the troop of the Philistines pitched in the valley of Rephaim. Rephaim. <clears throat> now you got to remember David's running it at this time from Saul. But David's already king, and Saul's already been taken down. He just don't know it. But David would not touch the Lord's anointing. He went to cut his skirt off one time when he caught him in the cave going to the bathroom. But he wasn't going to touch God's anointing. He repented of it. And he says, and David was in an hold, and the garrison of the Philistines was in Bethlehem. And David longed and said, Oh, that one would give me a drink of the water of the well of Bethlehem, which is by the gate. That's all he said. He just longed for a drink of water from the well by the gate in Bethlehem. Look how they treated him. And the three mighty men break through the host of the Philistines and drew water out of the well of Bethlehem that was by the gate and took it and brought it to David. I mean, they broke through three men. They broke through the host just to get David a drink of water. Not in this church. They just talk about how he shouldn't even think about water. Nevertheless, he would not drink thereof, but poured it out unto the Lord. And he said, be it far from me, O Lord, that I should do this. Is not this the blood of the men that went in jeopardy of their lives? Therefore he would not drink it. These things did these three mighty men. And Abishai, the brother of Joab, the son of Zeruiah, was chief among three. And he lifted up the spear against three hundred and slew them and had the name among the three. Do you know why David was able to go down and slew Goliath? Because he had his stone. No, that's not why. It's because he had a heart like a lion. He was a small statue, but he had a heart of a lion. You can see big men that are wimps. They walk around like this. <laughs> but you see some little guy, kind of quiet. Amen. But he don't back down from anything. David was probably one like that. 
He trusted in God. And you're right, Derek, he had God. Amen. Amen. And he lifted up the spear against 300 and slew them and had the name among three. Was he not most honorable of the three? Therefore he was their captain, howbeit he attained not unto the first three. And Benai, the son of Jehoda, Jehoda, the son of a valiant man of Kabzeel, who had done many acts, he slew two lion-like men of Moab. He went down also and slew a lion in the midst of a pit in the time of snow. In other words, that cat was hungry. Amen. He jumped down there in the pit with that cat <laughs> and took him out. And he slew an Egyptian, a god, a goodly man, and the Egyptians had a spear, the Egyptian had a spear in his hand. But he went down to him with a staff. You know what a staff is? That's that little curved stick, you know, the hook on it for shepherds. And it says, he went down to him with a staff and plucked the spear out of the Egyptian's hand and slew him with his own spear. Hey, these black op guys, they ain't got nothing on these men. These things did Benaiah, the son of Jehoda, and had the name among three mighty men. He was more honorable than the thirty, but he attained not to the first three. And David set him over his guard. And Ahashiel, the brother of Joab, was one of thirty. And Elhanan, the son of Dodo of Bethlehem. Shammah, the Haredite, Elika, the Haredite, and Helez, the Paltite, Ira, the son of Ikesh, the Tekoite, Abiazer, and Anathoathite, Mibane, <laughs> the Hush they had to fight. Man, when names like that, you got to fight. <laughs> Amen. You come up here, hey, aren't you related to Dodo? <laughs> <laughs> Zalman, the Hohite, Mayorai, the Neptophilite, Heleb, the son of Bana, of Netophilite, Itai, the son of Rebai, out of Gibeah, of the children of Benjamin, Benaiah, the Pyrathonite, Parathonite, Hit Ai of the brooks of Gaash. Gee, hon, what are we going to call our son? Oh, let me think on that a moment. What's he thought well, let's see. He reminds me of Derek. Let's call him Dodo. Avalon, the Arathite, as Mapheth, the Barhumite. Eliaba, the Shalabonite of the sons of Jashin, Jonathan, Shema of the Harite, Ahiam, the son of Sharar, and Harahite, <laughs> Elephalet, the son of Ahazbai, the son of Maakthite, Maim, the son of so and so, and so and so. Ahabethel, the Gilonite, Hezrei, the Carmelite, Peoran, the Arbite. Yeah. <coughs> Must have bit somebody. <laughs> Igal, the son of Nathan, of Zobah, Bani, the Gadite. I wouldn't say this in front of them. You remember these for David's mighty men. <laughs> <laughs> Zelech, the Ammonite. Neharai, the Barathite, armor bearer to Joab, the son of Zuzurai, Ira, the Ithrite, Gareba, and Ithrite, Uriah, the Hittite, 37 in all. Amen. 37 in all. 
David had some mighty men. They were faithful men. God noticed them because he put them in his book just to tie our tongues up. <laughs> Amen. But do you realize that these were still just common men? These weren't people standing 10 foot tall. They might have been 10 foot tall inside. But these were just regular Jewish people, men. But they had hearts like lions. And because they were faithful, God empowered them, gave them victory. Do you know that the Bible says that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever? Do you know that he'd still do the same thing today if we would just succumb to his word and obey it? Amen. We could do mighty things for God today if we wanted to. But most of us are wrapped up in our own selves. I look at scrawny little Richard today. Hey, Ben. He stuck his arm out to pull me up. He's strong. Hey, Amen. He tied him up in a knot. <laughs> hey, Amen. See it? Little fellow like that. Got strength. Really, you ought to see Richard. He comes in, he starts. I mean, he just. Bing, 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 ricochet rap. I mean, he's just gone. No, that's not the fact. Break time comes, takes his break, and he's right back at it again to lunchtime. After lunch, he's out there again. Sometimes you got to slow him down. He gets a little too fast. You ready? Tim? Go, boom, boom, go. Go, boom, go, So when we don't have a forklift handy, we use Tim. <laughs> See, I even got a few mighty men myself. <laughs> don't go too far. <laughs> Wouldn't you like God to notice you because of your faithfulness? Imagine what he could do with you. What's it? I forget who said this. Maybe Miss Randall remembers. Oh, I think it was uh, Bob Jones Sr. He said the world is yet to see what God could do with one man totally sold out to him. Amen. There's a few missionaries out there that totally sold out. And they've gone to do great things. But listen, you look at the old boy with the pea patch. You don't see a whole lot in the Bible about him. It just says what he did. God noticed it. God wrought a victory for Israel because of one man. Everybody else fled. Look at here's the whole army of Israel and the Philistines. And it's one reprobate Philistine. Overgrowing, coming up there mocking them. David shows up and he's upset because he's mocking the armies of the living God. Everybody else was afraid to go out there. You got to remember Saul stood head and shoulders above everybody. And he's afraid to go out there. So he's going to outfit David in his armor. David said, nah. Took a slingshot and five smooth stones. You know why he took five stones? It wasn't because he didn't think the first one would do it. It's because the old boy had some brothers. Can you imagine that little fellow going down there? Pop! Ooh, I got a headache. <laughs> and he falls over, and David goes down and picks up that big sword. Boom! Cuts his head off. Victory! <laughs> Don't you know there were some jealous people up on the hill? But God was established in David because of his faithfulness at home. Because he did what was right at home. Yep. Amen. Amen. 
Don't think God's going to put you in a position and then let you start doing right. You start now and he'll put you in a position. Mm -hmm. Amen. Well, that's all I have for you tonight. It's just small things. That's how God works. Pray for Sister Teresa. I think I heard her tell Tommy about the 29th. She's, they're going to go drain her brain. I mean, uh, do a spinal. <laughs> They'll probably come up dry. <laughs> now, keep her in prayer. Amen. And keep my wife in prayer. Pray for Pat. Um, he's in this country. She um, has got the precious tap and his own IVs. Also, Ruth. Yeah. Gwendol, Gwendol's wife, Miss Bundrick. Yeah, pray for Miss Bundrick. Pray for Johnny's wife. Amen. That gastroparesis is no joke. It's no joke. Amen. All right. Anybody got anything they want to uh, say before we close out? All right. Brother Tom, if you'll pray for those prayer requests. Appreciate it, Father. Well, thank you for this day, Lord. Your love and kindness, your mercy, your grace, Lord. And thank for each and every one of us able to be here today, Lord. I just pray that they had ears to hear today, Lord. And I pray for the, the prayer requests we have, Lord. You heard the names, and Lord, and I just lift them up to you, Lord, because you are a great physician. And Lord, I pray for you to do a mighty work in their lives. And Lord, I just pray for travel and mercy for each and every one of us tonight. Lord, get home safely and tell the Lord that your will will get up tomorrow morning and go back and Work under you, and we'll be sure to give you all the praise, honor, and glory. All the precious name of Lord Jesus Christ, have a prayer and ask thanks. And remember, you better stop your Jim Jam Boogie Woogie Party Hearty Fornicating because your head is straight to hell like a bullet, my friend. <laughs>